This is the biggest problem facing our world today, according to Elon Musk, and nobody is talking about it. For decades, some of the world's smartest people have been warning about this, but nobody seems to want to heed the call. I'm not talking about climate change, and I'm not talking about the war in Ukraine. What I'm talking about is the declining birth rate, especially in developed nations. In order to maintain our population, there needs to be an average of 2.1 children for every woman. This is known as the replacement rate, and we are way below that, especially in developed nations and this is going to have massive economic implications worldwide. A healthy population looks a little bit like a pyramid. At the top, the smallest percentile of the population is all of the old people. In the middle, you've got labor force, which is the working age people, and at the bottom, you've got the children. The way that this is now going is that we have fewer children because of urbanization and many other factors which I will explain, and then we have more old people at the top because people are living longer. Obviously, having fewer children means that there's going to be fewer working age people in the future. And now that people are getting older, there's going to be more old people and less working age people to sustain our aging population. This is why the retirement ages in developed nations are going up all the time. So what this will look like is an upside down pyramid. You'll have fewer younger people, much more older people to support who can't work, and then you'll have the middle people carrying an even bigger load. Japan's population decreased by 640,000 in 2021. Nigeria is likely to have a bigger population than China by the year 2100 because China birth rate is falling so badly. I'll do a full video on that. In the 1960s, the international birth rate was roughly five. These days, it's now 2.4. As I said in the last video, our birth rate needs to be at least 2.1 to sustain our population. Here are some stats from 2020 about the birth rates of various countries. Now remember, these are set to be much worse now because of economic implications and other implications of the pandemic. In Italy and Spain, the birth rate is just 1.2. In Greece and Japan, it's 1.3. In Canada, it's 1.4. In Germany, it's 1.5. And in New Zealand, the United Kingdom, Australia, and the USA, it's 1.6. As you go down the list of birth rates, all of the countries that are at maintenance or above are predominantly in the Arab world or in Africa. This goes to show that as countries get wealthier, the birth rates fall. Statistics show that the more wealthy you are and the more educated you are, the less kids you have. Monaco, for example, is one of the lowest birth rates in the world, and it's one of the richest countries in the world. All of the highest birth rates are in sub-Saharan Africa. Have you ever heard anybody say that they don't want to have children because the world's overpopulated? I know I have. And on the surface, it seems like a pretty reasonable thing to say, right? Well, in reality, it's one of the most nihilistic and destructive things that you can possibly think. This idea is one that can be traced back to the 18th century to a man named Thomas Malthus, the father of what is now known as Malthusianism. Now, the general principle of Malthusianism is that population growth is exponential and the growth of food supply and other resources is linear, which will lead to the population increasing and eventually the standard of living dropping to the point where people die off. Now, Malthus was a man that argued for controlling the birth rate and also for depopulation, to put it lightly. He also said that war was a good thing because it would kill off half of the population and we wouldn't be constrained by limited resources. Now, this idea obviously became extremely popular in the only place that these ideas become popular, amongst the academic elite. Fast forward now to 1968, where a group called the Club of Rome is founded. These guys basically took Malthusian ideas and repackaged them for the modern age. In 1972, they came out with Limits to Growth, which was a paper about the predicament of mankind. MIT even made this into a computer program where they predicted the end of the world based on population growth, pollution, and environmental damage. And in 1991, the Club of Rome came out with another massively popular paper. This paper re-articulated their views, but with a view towards centralization of power and decision-making, or a one-world government, as they believed that this crisis could not be handled at the local level, and power and decision-making needed to be centralized. So where can we see Malthusianism and the depopulationist cult rear their ugly heads today? Bill Gates is probably the most famous and influential of the Malthusians today, but Klaus Schwab is another one who is extremely powerful and influential. Klaus Schwab is the man that founded the World Economic Forum in 1971, 
Some would say coincidentally, the same year that the US moved off the gold standard and onto their current fiat currency. Klaus Schwab is an elitist and he's a massive admirer of the Club of Rome and shares their Malthusian ideal. One of Klaus's greatest influences is Henry Kissinger. One of Kissinger's famous quotes is, who controls the food controls the people, who controls energy can control continents, and who controls the money controls the world. Controlling the world's energy supplies and reducing the birth rates are two essential factors in the Malthusian ideology. Bill Gates echoes these sentiments and has also been hugely influenced by Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum. Gates is an advocate for the elimination of meat from the common diet. Furthermore to this, he's been buying up farmland in the US at staggering rates and is now the largest private landholder in the USA. You may have seen this year that the Dutch government put crippling restrictions on the country's farmers, who also have happen to be the second most efficient farmers in the world. And all of this in the midst of a chronic world food shortage that is going to absolutely decimate the developing world. Due to the war in Ukraine, we're also now in the midst of an international energy crisis. This is going to be felt in our energy bills, but more so it's going to be felt in the developing world. You would have noticed recently that inflation is becoming a massive problem. Wages have basically been staying the same while the price of goods and services have only been going up. Food crisis, energy crisis, and massive disparities in wealth only being exaggerated by the day. Are you starting to connect the dots yet?